Well, today I feel like we're doing some ice fishing preparation, open water edition, because we're out here, <laughs> it's August, it's hot, it's warm, and I'm actually thinking about ice. I'm thinking about it cooling down and getting out and walking on this water. Well, a lot of anglers don't consider um, figuring out where they're going to fish in the winter when it's summertime. So one thing you can do that's highly advantageous is get out in the boat and look for some of these areas on your sonar and on your mapping that you might want to hit when we do have ice. So what I'll do, I'll use my sonar unit and of course I'm looking for simple changes. I mean, simply put, fish like to be around things. In the summer that might be uh, a change in the depth. It might be a change in the bottom structure. For instance, going from a sandy bottom to a mud bottom, or maybe it's vegetation that turns into you know, essentially no vegetation, rocks that change to gravel. Any type of those changes fish like to be around. And it's easiest to determine some of those areas when we're out on the lake because we can just drive around and look with our eyes beneath the water, our sonar, instead of having to drill a hole each time and maybe dropping down an underwater camera or using your sonar system like your Vexilar, for instance. So what I do is I look at the maps and you can see each of these lines, this is just a change in depth. It's either getting shallower or deeper. And what I noticed on this particular spot is that you've got some areas that bump out just a little bit and I look off the tip of this and I see this, I'd almost call it a finger that points out here. And I'd like to get over there and actually see what's sitting on there. There might not be any fish on it right now, but that's an area that I definitely like to check out in terms of if there's weeds there, what type of weeds they are, uh, what the drop-offs are like, uh, and just the depth of water. If I find fish there right now, today in August, I don't know if they're gonna be there when it's time to ice fish. In fact, the likelihood is not that great, but it could be, it could be. I'm not necessarily looking for fish right now, I'm looking for different locations. Now what I can do is there's different mapping applications that you can get for your, your smartphone. Like on here right now, I've got the Navionics app and it's relatively inexpensive. So you can put this on, it's a paid app, but it's a one-time fee and you can mark spots so if I wanted to mark where we're at, or, or even that little finger, I could put the cursor right on it, I could mark that spot. And then when I go out on the ice, I almost always have my cell phone in my hand. So it's really simple to just refer to this and use that as my GPS. It's not gonna tell me the exact depth that I'm in right now, but it is going to have that mapping feature on there. So then I drill a hole and then I'm using my sonar like my Vexlar to see how deep it is and if there's any fish there, if there's any weeds there and whatnot. One consideration, if you're using mapping on your phone and whether it's the Navionics, there's the Humminbird Fish Smart, that you need to make sure that you've got a full battery in your phone because if your phone goes dead, now you have no navigation to access on there. So one thing that I usually do is I'll bring an external battery pack so I can just plug it in. There's a number of different ways that you can keep your phone charged when you're out on the ice. But if you're going to rely upon the mapping, you need to rely upon your battery for your phone as well. Now, certain types of weeds are only going to grow in the summer. Take uh, Northern milfoil, for instance, that it, it will die in the fall and it will fall down flat. So even though we might see weeds today, they might not be there in the winter. So using an underwater camera when you're out in the boat is also advantageous. But one thing to consider, even when you're looking at all these different areas that you might fish, and I'm thinking about this one specifically for walleye fishing, where I've got that drop and that, that underwater point coming out here. I might walleye fish that area, but it might not be my best choice for panfish, for instance. I might be looking at a, a shallow flat that has a, a gradual drop off or even a steep drop off that has a lot of vegetation on the edge. And one thing I will say about ice fishing is that weeds are king. Most of the time, you're going to find fish relative to vegetation. It's simply their habitat, it's their home. So weeds are, are a good place to start. And then go from there, start looking in some of those open waters for some of those other species of fish that might uh, use rock or, or they're moving around because of the bait fish that are out in those like basin areas, for instance. 
But one thing to consider when you use the maps is your own personal safety. And that's imperative when you're ice fishing. So though you might find a spot like this, it might be miles from where you're going to access the lake. So start small first and concentrate on the areas that you can get to easily. In the first part of the season or in the very late part of the season, you might be on foot. So the closer to that access point that that location is, the better that it's going to work out for you. So now I've actually landed on this little finger that sticks out that we wanted to check out if it's a good area for walleye fishing through the ice. And what I've discovered is that we've got a, a fairly hard bottom. We do have a little bit of vegetation out there. It's hard to say whether or not that'll still be around in the winter. Uh, but I do see when it starts to uh, get just a little bit shallower, we've got some really nice vegetation that grows. And, and weeds will grow out to a certain point. It's all based upon light penetration. Uh, because a weed is just, a, it's just another plant. It needs soil and water and sunlight. And as we start to get to a certain depth, we'll start to see uh, more weeds. And the, the furthest point, the deepest point that the weeds will grow on a lake, we call that the weed line. And I like to find the edges of those weed lines because it's actually a highway for fish. They travel along it looking for uh, forage. And if we can get right onto that weed line, I think that's where a good spot to set up is going to be, especially for the early season walleye that we're gonna find out there. And there we can start to see those weeds develop. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that on my cell phone in my mapping application, because that's what I'm going to have with me. I may have a unit like this in my vehicle, on my ATV, on my snowmobile, but especially if I'm walking in that early season or late, late season, I'm going to have my phone with me at all times. Now, I am so fortunate and blessed that I have this big boat that I can take out with all this fancy equipment. Not everybody has that. And I don't take this boat out on every lake that I'm scouting for ice fishing. There's still a lot of value with something so simple as your eyes. So if you've got a kayak or a small boat or a canoe, even a float tube that you're going out in, use your eyes to visually see that vegetation on these clear water lakes. It's really simple to do, but also, fish the spots. You might catch some of those weeds and, and see exactly what types they are. You might even catch some, some fish in an area. And the later you do it in the season, the more likely, if you find fish there, that they're still gonna be there at first ice. One final consideration is that if you're just getting into ice fishing, you gotta think about what's going to be simple. Keep it simple. So if you're thinking of a big adventure, you don't have to go away for a couple days. You don't have to travel miles and miles from your house to catch fish. You might be looking at a small body of water that's even just a couple of blocks out your front door. So don't only consider the entry point and how far you may have to walk to the spot, but consider how far you're actually driving from your house because some of the best fishing is right out your back door. <laughs>